Um, hello everyone, thank you for coming along. I know lots of you have had a busy day and you've made your way here. Um, the, Royal College of Art and this, the Royal College of Art and the School of Fine Art is very happy to have um, Ulla von Brandenburg, who's also been working on a masterclass this afternoon with a, with a group of students. Um, this is the fifth visual cultures lecture of the series, and um, we're very happy to have Ulla along today. Um, I'm going to give a very short introduction and then hand straight over to her. Um, she was born in 1974 in Karlsruhe in Germany. She lives and works in Paris. And re recent solo exhibitions of the artist's work and group shows include Secession at the Kunsthaus Hamburg in 2013, Mirror Song at Pilo Carraris in London 2012, The Common Guild Glasgow 2011, Chisenhall Gallery London in 2009, Irish Museum of Modern Art, Dublin, 2008, the Steidlich Museum in Amsterdam, in 08, the Wattis Institute of Contemporary Art in San Francisco, in 2008 as well. Um, she works in a diverse range of media and creates complex and multi-layered narratives that investigate the verge between reality and artifice. And what I find particularly interesting about Ulla's work is how she navigates the realms of the handmade and the homespun while enabling the work to hold its own on the largest of arenas. It's as if what, be, what was tabletop, or note to self, is transformed into something more monumental. And yet the work then also gives itself back. It gives itself up to return to the, that most sacred of places, that space where we can think and play and be curious. Um, with no further ado, I want to hand over to Ulla. Thank you, Ulla. Hello, good evening. Thank you for, do you hear me? Yeah, two microphones. Uh, thank you for this invitation. I'm very happy to be invited at the ICA, RCA, because I was here already in 2006, but in another building in front of the Hyde Park, and um, I was invited by this cur cur curatorial program and I did a big wall drawing and what was really nice is that the curator who invited me was painting with me the wall drawing because we was really tight in time and we painted the whole night with many details and that was the last time a curator helped me realizing an artwork and I that was great. Um, I start right away with the with the images and I show you images of, of works of the last five years, approximately. Oh, that's too fast. And after this, I, I will show you three films. Um, and you, you, it, um, they handed out um, the translations of the text because all of my films are in German and the translation is on the text. I don't know where, is, where it's running. Sorry, I just have to make something new <coughs> this is um oh i'm sorry does anybody know why it's running itself i but it didn't make this last time if you go back to the image go to the image one this and, and run and then it's but I if you can press that it's pausing it sorry for that <coughs> I started again run manually Um, this uh, is a show, it's just over in the gallery Art Concept, and I was showing my new film with the title Die Straße, which I show after. Die Straße called The Street um, in English. 
And I'm often making um, films, and these films I show in architectures. And one of the, the last image of the film is a woman who holds an, a mirror, and you see the street where the film is inside, upside down. And I wanted to, to create an architecture in fabric, which is like a street, but it's upside down. I mean, the, but the only indicate are the stairs which are floating over your head. And um, and then I'm always trying um, to put something which is in the film, already in the show, that you have this kind of déjà vu effect. That means you see this space before, you see the fishing lines and this kind of um, cardboard box and the hats, and then in the film, you see these objects again and used by the actors. And the idea of the film was to make a street which is um, built by, you see it in the background, by these panels with fabric. So also the architecture where it's showed inside it's it's somehow doubling or reminding on the architecture in the film and this uh, this uh, guy you see on the right he's coming to a village and um, and they're preparing something it's not really clear and he's uh, they are all singing and he's asking people what they are doing and um, and they're doing things he never saw and he is uh, he's this kind of stranger or outsider who is coming in a community and trying to get what they do. And this installation I will show um, in, in three weeks in a, in a very big um, installation like a street. So that means you come inside and you have all this way with many objects of the film to see in the end the film. This is a diptych, it's a watercolor on old paper and it's called o Ostrich. And it's a man and a woman who are um, taking feathers from an ostrich to make the costumes for the Concon girls. Um, and I'm, I'm using watercolor, um, I mean, it's all, it's all about images which I find and then I reproduce them, but in a kind of hazardous uh, way. Also, the colors are more or less hazardous. And then I also I paint them um, not upside down, but you see the drippings are going inside. And it's in the same time, it's also like a Ruachach because it's um, mirroring. This is a diver. You see the diver. Yeah, on the right and on the left, this kind of uh, tube. And uh, the drippings come from that I try. I'm, I mean, the first uh, big drawings I made I were a lot of portraits, and I really like this idea that it comes from, I mean, the, the source material is somehow often photography, but then it's, I translate it in, in watercolor and then it's fading away. So I'm throwing a lot of water on it that it's already disappearing and that it's all, it's some of these kind of ghost portraits. This is called a sheep and lion and the man is confronting a lion and a sheep. This is called Inside is Not Outside. And I was sewing many ties together to a circle. And the circle for me is also like the, like the most um, important um, uh, thing what you can wear. So it can be a, a, a skirt or it can be a cape or a dress. And, um, and it's I, actually I made it f that I ha I, w I wanted to have only an image on my catalog, so I made this piece mainly as a cover for my catalog. This was uh, the show in the Secession, and um, the Secession is a very huge space, and it's it's nearly like a church because you have this main big space, and then you have in the 
<coughs> Sorry. You have in the in the back a space where it's normally an altar, and for me it was a very um, difficult space, and I thought I have to do something very uh, big and and strong inside. So I was building this scene where you were coming up the stairs, and um, and over you there were these real uh, backdrops, and you went down, and then you had to go through this red curtain. And the red curtain <clears throat> should look like if the um, if the sun bleached out in the succession this this fabric, and they just uh, let it down, and you have to go through this fabric and see at the backside the film on the stairs, and the stairs gets to I mean to seats. And these were also uh, real backdrops. And this was also the idea that we could change it to make, a, to make another thing with this stage. And for me, I mean, for these installations, the idea is really that um, to, to activate the visitor, that means that they, that they are in the same position as the actor or as the spectator and that also they decide which role or which position they want to have. This is a costume for a man. And um, I wanted to make costumes which are framed and they are real size costumes in paper. It's, it's like collage on old paper. And, um, and there's a glass, I mean, on the frame. And if you're standing in front of your kind of somehow mirroring yourself in the costume. This is man with bear. And some of these costumes are also linked with, uh, with my films. For example, in Die Straße, there is a there is a bear also appearing. I mean, somebody who is who is dressed as a, as a bear. And this is also one of the costumes of the film. It's a man with ribbons. And this is called costume of the bandit Gasparone. And it's a, it's a costume which is existing in the Museum of Torino. Of, it's a museum about uh, prisons and crime. And this was the costume of this bandit when he was working. Um, and I did a film with the title Shadow Play, which I will also show. Uh, later, where you see um, actors behind the screen uh, preparing themselves for um, for a spectacle, and they are they are putting their costumes on, and um, and I wanted to do a, to sew a tent where you go inside and the screen is one by one that you have really the feeling that the actors are behind the screen. This is the first image of the film when the, the costumes are attached and they are pulling them down. And for in my work, what is important is that there, there are, um, I mean, there are films or parts of installations and that, that I'm reusing them. Somehow it's like a, kind of uh, mosaic and I'm, I mean, this film Shadow Play I showed in Ghent in this show here with this kind of um, theater stairs and um, also because this space was a, was a former um, university of, of medicine where they cut uh, dead bodies in the body, uh, in, the, um, in the space in the middle. So I wanted to recall somehow this former use of the space 
and then the space was symmetrically so I did uh, on the right and on the left a curtain which I bleached also out what you see here um, that it looks like that it uh, was a long time uh, in the sun And then there were different objects on the left and on the right and in another space. I showed the film Mirror Song. Um, and this I will explain a bit later. This is a ribbon sculpture where I dyed, I dyed ribbons and they make drippings on the wall. And this is in Wiels. This is a, a big sail which I was, uh, which I shoot, and it's somehow repeating a landscape. So in um, where the green is is somehow the foreground, and then it goes more and more in the back, with the and it gets more and more blue in the sky. So it's a kind of perspective half tent, and underneath I'm showing the objects, which is a film which has also these kind of stations and, and uh, time procedure. This was a show in Rome um, with the title Ombra Propria, what means own shadow. And um, there were objects pulled up to the ceiling Um, I mean, different objects and a bit like marionettes, but also all, I mean, there's a person, of course, this is the costume, then there is a chair, they're very much linked to a human being, but then there are these kind of abstract forms. And those I was reproducing on, on fabric with a claw. And um, and I bleached the fabric and I mean folded out with this object in front. This is the hat, which is really small in the installation, and the costume. This installation is called Wagon Wheel, and I showed it first time in here in London in Pila Korea's gallery. Uh, this image is from Lyon, and um, these are uh, big quilts, which I shoot with uh, used fabrics, which was important for me that the fabrics come out from different contexts and that there were, uh, yeah, that they are napkins and whatever, and they get and they're getting something new and in the same time the quilts are like um, like blown up they're like if I mean like a giant quilt and with a giant scissor somebody cuts it out so you see the quilting stitch really really big Uh, this is a short film, also a shadow play film, but this is animated with paper and it's called Two Men and the Wild Boar. And there's a worker who has to work and there's a boss and he kicks him um, and he says that he has to work faster. And then he goes into the forest and uh, a wild boar says to him that he has a wish free. And he says that he wants to change the world, that he wants to be the boss. And then it's, and then it's, it's the same and it's, it's a loop, an eternal loop, which is repeating. This was in the Palais de Tokyo, an installation which was there over two years. And um, it's called 
death of a king and I wanted to make a, I mean, the idea was to make a <coughs> space where people come and they don't have to pay in this area and they can just uh, spend time. And I wanted to make a space where uh, also kids can run up. And the idea is that the form is like a skater ramp because outside of the Palito de Cuba are a lot of skaters. I mean, they were not allowed to come inside with their skateboards, but the idea was to swap inside and outside. And the, actually, this work was before the work in the Palais de Tokyo. And for the for the pattern of this, I was I was folding the I was folding this curtain and and made a collage out of the folds of this curtain. And um, th this is in the space in Paris, Rosa's Cape. And there were two identical um, spaces. And I did two identical curtains, which are mirroring themselves. And behind each curtain, there was a projection of the film, which is called Mirror Song. And this film I did in the space. And I, I filmed into this mirror inside. And I filmed twice the same film, but mirrored. So when I'm showing that, you saw that before, I show them often, like, I mean, mirrored. So this is mirror song one. And this is two. So the actors had to play the whole scene mirrored. So they had to remember somehow what, what did I do with my right? And what do I, do I have to do with my left? And it's a kind of, they are singing, and it's a kind of, uh, little absurd scene that she's coming inside um, and she's asking what color um, the gloves have and one of the men says I can't see it because the film is in black and white And I'm, I mean, if I have the possibilities for solo shows, I like to do print works, which are, um, I mean, which are for takeaway. And this was a poster with um, a kind of collection of images, which were important for me for this, in this moment for this production of Mirror Song. And there's this kind of mise en abîme um, inside. So you see the whole poster uh, in little up, on the left, uh, on the right, up left, right, and the back. The back of the poster was a kind of zoom into this, onto the little poster where you see the little poster inside. And this was a this was a newspaper which was for to take away in Ghent in the solo show, and I was scanning old quilts which I am collecting, and I was always printing the back and the foreside of the quilt and in black and white. And this is another newspaper where I found an I found a book from a printing house from 1903, and they put all it was like a diary of a printing house, and they put all images in they glued them in this big book, which they printed like day after day. So is there, sometimes you see an order, but sometimes there it doesn't make sense at all what kind of images they put next to each other, and in the same time you see a kind of. Uh, you see what, what was going on in 1903 or what was printed and 
interested. Um, this is called The Hiding of WL. Um, and I showed this in Vancouver in a show, and it's a, um, it's a fabric piece of 30 meter, which I, you see it here, which I dyed in, with many different colors. And, um, and somehow this is an installation which could be also shown, I mean, you can pull it out longer or shorter, depending on the space where it, where it is. And it's also the idea, like the, like the fabric insulation you saw in the beginning, this is also a fabric insulation, but it's not, uh, it's not installed. It's like the beginning of, of something. It's the possibility of making a hiding of this person who collects, who is collecting. This is in Turin and um, in the um, Rebaudengo, Fondation Rebaudengo, and they invited 20 artists to visit 20 different um, regions in Italy, and they choose me for Sardinia. And for me, the most interesting thing was the carnival, the Mamutunes in Isaturus, and I. I filmed with a uh, 60 millimeter um, in the middle of them, this, this dance, what they always do, and they do it around a fire normally. So I'm with the camera there where the fire normally is. And, and what was very interesting for me is because I come from Karlsruhe, which is close to the Black Forest, how much uh, similarities are in the, in the costumes. And they, and if they have, when they have this uh, carnival, Mamutunas uh, thing, they build many stages everywhere in their villages. So I rebuilt a stage, what I saw there. Um, and um, this is also this kind of idea to have an architecture which is empty and a possible content, the film. And this film is with, with sound. And what is nice is that the, you only hear the bells and it comes out from the 16 millimeter projector. So somehow this, this metal from the 16 millimeter projector is mixing up with the bells. This is called Quilt and I was, sewing together um, vestures, trousers and ties to a kind of uh, circle and um, a society of men where women are <coughs> not, uh, I mean, are not part of this. Uh, and it could, be, it could be like a secret society. But in the same time, this kind of old clothing remind always to dead, dead people. And this was in the in the Common Guild in Glasgow, and <clears throat> when you entered uh, the room, you you had to uh, I mean you were touched or not touched by this little curtain of ties. And in um, in in Germany, I don't know how it is in here. There is one day where women have the right to cut ties of of the men and. Um, <clears throat> and I saw a photo of from 1960 where all the, all these women they cut the ties over the day, put them in the bar, and and carnival is of course always this kind of inversion of power. And these um, these were two curtains I found. Um, 
there's, that was the back of, of curtains and they were exposed a long time to, to sunlight. And also you see, I, I found them in Paris in the flea market, and you see somehow the um, kind of house manian architecture, the balcony on the, on the bottom and then the window up and, and the folds, of course. So it's kind of a photogram of a, of a window. And um, <clears throat> in this show, I showed also a film co uh, called Chorspiel, and in this film, a box is very important, which is not opened. So I wanted to have a, a box in somewhere in the space, like a possible box with a possible content of ribbons. And these ribbons played in like four of my my former films, in and they were always like a knot. So this was kind of. Uh, first step to to try to make an order into the knot and to roll them. And this is the film Korspiel, which I filmed in Sweden and and first I did a performance in in Malmo Malmo and the film came came after. So we went into a forest and I painted with like white sand, a kind of square of the floor. And this was the house of this family and there is coming this stranger with a box in the family and mixes up the, the, the structure. And this is the daughter. With her grandmother. And she hopes that the stranger comes and takes her out. But in the end, the stranger is trying to delete the knot and she's looking outside. And in, in a show in, in Israel, I showed this film in an installation of this kind of wood where, where I shot the film or in a kind of um, backdrop of a landscape in a spiral. And this is a show in Warsaw. And it was a show where uh, the pieces were only visible from outside. And if you were looking through this slit, you saw, you saw a kind of stage with real theaters, uh, theater backdrops from the opera from Warsaw and um, a kind of labyrinthic situation where you don't know on which side you are of the stage. And this is the last piece. This was also in Turin, and it's called Five Folded Curtains. And you enter this uh, wooden stage, and every curtain was differently folded. And it was a passageway, so that means that people who come came from the other side um, were somehow put on stage, but as well as you, and then there were these questions, who looks at whom? Or what? what is your role? This is the Straße and it takes 11 minutes.
du dich deine dir, wenn's doch schon gewesen wär. Keiner gräbt mich, keiner klebt dich, ein anderer im anderen. Ganz mal sehen, wenn's grad so geht, Kentern im Rand, verbrannt und nicht erkannt. Wenn's nur roter Teppich wär, Uhren singen mir mein Lied. Jeden Tag ein anderes, Tote wecken zu der anderen. Rettung nirgendwo in sich, lieber malen, doch nach Zahlen kann's gewiss ein Hündchen sein. Gestern gestohlen und heute befohlen, Sekunden nur um frei zu sein. Das 
das Kleid geknöpft, das Lied gesungen. Wo stehst du hier im Bild? Hase, Hase, Mense, Mu, nix gehunse, selge Hanse, Benze, Vase, Wose, wie diese Dase, diese Du. Hase, Hase, Mense, And the next film I show you is Shadow Play. <coughs> and it's uh, seven minutes.
thank you very much. I'm I, I didn't say all about my work, but you can ask me questions if there are. Hello. What, what 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 were you trained in? What's your background? Uh, sorry, I can't see you. Sorry, what were you trained in? What's no, your I background? You, but, but I would like to know where the ah I, okay, I see now. Okay, uh, my background. Um, I started um, I started with scenography in Karlsruhe at the at this school, which is linked to the ZKM where it is also a, a lot about new media. And, um, and then I was going to Hamburg and I wanted to study, and I also I worked in theater, but then um, it was not that what I thought, what I want to do. I mean, the, like the structure of theater and that also if you do stage design that you're always serving in a way a piece. So when I was in Hamburg, I, and already in, in Karlsruhe, I met Günther Ferg for example, and then in Hamburg, I met Stanley Brown and uh, Jochen Hildmann, and um, and they showed me the way. And then I, I didn't want to do anything with theater, and I was doing a lot of abstract art, and it took uh, a couple of years to, to get back to theater and, and also to know what is my interest and why I'm so interested in, in theater. Thank you. Why are you interested in theater? <laughs> I, wait, I waited for this question. Um, I'm interested in theater because there, are, um, for many reasons, there's the reason of the of the life effect. Also, all my films are always one shots. So in in a way, it's it's like the film performance, and it's never completely, uh, I, I mean, it looked everything very chosen, but there are a lot of hazard moments c coming, and this is only coming if you do it live, and if you, I mean, live, and, and if you do it, like these films, one shot. Um, the other thing of theater is um, the curtain, this kind of uh, separation between spectators and um, actors, and to see the curtain also as a mirror, and, and what is um, what is happening when you're when you're going behind the mirror, uh, behind the curtain, or on which side are you? And then the image of the actor. I mean, this in the two films, and especially in the last one, shadow play. The actors are singing um, a lot about the life of an actor and what kind of role uh, I'm playing here and. I'm, I don't want to bow anymore and I, I, I'm fed up with this role. I mean, the, the, the actor as an image for, um, for us and what kind of roles we are playing in what kind of society and who wrote the piece um, uh, we, are, we are playing and, and from whom this is dependent to say three things why I'm interested in theater. Thanks. Hi. Um, I was just wondering about um, how do you choose the music? Like, do you compose it together with somebody? Do you have it in your head before you start, or and where does it come from? Uh, first, I write the text, and I, I write the text always myself because of that. It's also always in German because the text is is a lot of uh, there's a lot of word games inside, and I tried to write in English, but it didn't work at all because it's very linked for me to the to the German language. And also, when I write it, it's um, it's it's not really like automatic writing, but I try to just write it at once that there are. I mean, somehow this kind of absurd uh, um, 
things coming together it doesn't make sense in the first uh, first view and um, and when I wrote the text after I composed the music or I tried to find a melody and for this um, for the first film I showed you die Straße I was singing the the voices of the inhabitants of the village and the man is uh, singing the voice of the of this man who is coming to the village and and then the second music which is a bit more uh, complicated <laughs> because the first one is only a cappella um, this I wrote I, I composed with a with another artist Laurent Montaron together I was wondering what is your relationship to quilting where is it I'm up here okay, okay. hi hi um, <clears throat> the um, quilting what, what I think is really interesting is that it's mainly done um, by women also in America there's this uh, tradition that women are sitting together and talking and doing these quilts together and even to stitch their own history uh, into the quilts and there's this kind of history with their families with their lives but then also the fabrics itself it's all about recycling. That means these fabrics are um, coming out of another context. They were shirts and whatever before. And then it's, um, and all that does, I mean, is something new. And then of course quilts normally are um, flat because it's on the bed. Um, and, and this kind of covering, I mean, this cover of the bed of your sleep with history, what I think is, it's really interesting. Um, so uh, I've noticed in, in a few aspects of your works, especially with what you say, um, I, I seem, seem to think that you kind of strive to strike a certain balance between um, uh, control and uh, um, chaos. Or for example, you said when you write the, the lyrics for your um, for your films, like you do something which is similar to automatic writing, but it's not automatic writing. And when the films are done, they're done in one take, so there is chaos, but in the end, it's quite controlled at the same time. Um, or you did this piece for the skaters in the Palais de Tokyo, where I believe in the end, the skaters were not probably allowed to skate in this thing. Unfortunately, um, not. <laughs> do you find that there is a... Um, uh, that you, there is a pressure on you um, that you put on yourself or others put on you in order to achieve a certain product at the end that limits um, a certain amount of flexibility or chaotic approach or um, more extreme approach that you would otherwise have in your practice. I'm not sure I made sense with this, but <laughs> 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 I kind of lost myself a little. Uh, I think it depends. Of course, I, I do artworks, especially, for example, the piece for the Palais de Tokyo. It was, if you want, <coughs> like, a, I mean, it was ordered. They wanted to have a space in the Palais de Tokyo which is accessible, where people can, can go on. And then, of course, there are things I can't do. I can't put, I don't know, a lot of glass, which is cutting the feet on the floor, for example. I mean, there, there Would you are do it? If you could. Sorry? But would you put glass? I mean, never. Like, like the never. <laughs> <laughs> um, and pressure. Pressure. Um, and, and, then, and then, for example, I mean, the Palais de Tokyo work is, is very, was very interesting for me because it was the first work which was um, appropriated really by the, by the public. And they, they, they did something with that and um, did something and it got something else. Um, if I do a, like this kind of fabric installation, then I guide in a, wa in a way uh, the path of the visitors. And I mean, the, the view is directed al also with film always. Mm -hmm. But um, I have to think about it more. <laughs> Get back to I me. Will, I time. will write you a letter. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, 
I have two questions. Is that okay? Yes, sure. How did you get linked into the fine art world? Into into what? In the fine what? The fine art. How did you get linked into fine art? Um, I I told you a bit already with your first question that I I was um, studying also um, painting with Günther Föck in Karlsruhe when I mean parallel to the scenography and then with Günther Föck I got more and more into into the fine art field and um, Okay, sorry, I did. I, I thought it, I only heard the scenography. Okay, I understand now. And uh, my second question is: How do you make money? Do you sell your installations? Uh, 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 rarely, unfortunately. Um, I sell these drawings. What you saw, because it's still like this. That if you do, if you do something which you could put on your wall, that sells unfortunately much better than big fabric installations because they are not I mean I don't know collectors don't have these big houses and then of course this installation sometimes it happens that a museum buys a film and, and I mean since seven years or something like that I can live uh, from my sellings but um, yeah but also I teach last year I teach in Reims and um, yeah I mean I didn't get rich by the way, until now. <laughs> um, thank you very much, first of all. Oh, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I think she wants to bring you the microphone. Yeah, I'm very interested in your watercolor and uh, paper cut pieces. Um, could you explain a little bit more about the idea? How how did you start to use the fold paper, a very thin, to like a gift paper to you, you to use watercolor on it? And does this fold trace mean something particular for you? And uh, for the paper cut pieces and uh, uh, like this uh, shadow play also, the silhouette, mm -hmm. the, the use of silhouette, how, how you develop this kind of idea. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, for your first question, the f I started um, uh, to do a lot of this kind of water um, watercolors which are dripping and fading away on um, silk paper which you use to make uh, clothing from Bourda. <laughs> And, and it's folded like this way. And I was doing, uh, for example, 2005 or six, I think, a show in the Kunsthalle Zurich. It was a small show. And all what I had was a little box with these um, folded drawings, but there I could put many in it. And, um, and then I came there and they put that on the wall and the room was full. And for me, that was a very, I mean, it's also like about um, theater or like a magic box or whatever, but to be independent, that means also from the, um, that I use not oil color, which I mean, it's not that expensive, but, but, but to be independent from, the, from what you use and also for the transport. That, and this kind of folding drawings, that has also something to do with the tense, for example, I show in, my, in the installations. This is also this kind of, um, to be like a nomadic artist and to put your tent or whatever uh, where you are and you are somehow independent. And in the same time, the tent is also something to be independent from the space. That means if you go inside, you don't see anymore what is outside. I mean, this kind of white cube context you, you don't have anymore if you're inside uh, the tent. Um, and the second question was, can you remind me? Silhouette. The silhouettes, um, I mean, I'm very interested in shadow because uh, shadow is, uh, is like a hole and it's like a space of imagination and it's like a space of the unconscious where you can read your fears or whatever uh, inside. And, and shadow, of course, is then translated um, in, in silhouettes 
in um, cutouts. Hi, um, I'm just wondering if you can talk a bit about the um, um, the kind of audio dubbing and the the sound of the pieces, because there's something that, um, especially in relation to theatre, maybe which normally a an actor might you'd you'd always hear the actor's voice, and in this it feels a bit weird that they're kind of silently silently impersonating um, a pre a, a separately made soundtrack. Um, and there's, I don't know, there's just something kind of odd about the... Um, there is. Um, what I, I, I'm trying always to, to reduce one information of the actors. So my very first films were only Tableau Vivant, and I filmed for the length of a 60 millimeter roll. Um, I mean, not even actors, my friends uh, in, in postures, and they are not moving, so... So they, you don't hear their voice, and even you don't see them how they move. Um, then later, I let them move, and but and then the idea was that they have voices, but I didn't want to have their own voice, and so I added my voice. In the first film I did with sound, it was my voice, um, and it was like the idea that this whole family, w which was living in this house, had the same voice. And also seeing that um, all the members of a house could be also w all the kind of different characters or part of the characters of, of one person. But then also um, this interesting fact that if you see somebody opening a mouth and whatever comes out, I mean, what you hear, that your brain is always trying to connect it. And then of course, there, th th this gap that you see men uh, singing and they have a women's voice um, and and to yeah somehow to create a gap in in the sense between the two of them. Uh, <laughs> because it's a beautiful, expensive city. You know, I don't know. Actually, I um I just moved out because Paris is so expensive. Uh, to the countryside, and um, why I live in Paris, and my partner, he's French, and he unfortunately didn't want to live in Germany. I'm not sure if it's quite the right word, but I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the kind of oldness in your work, this kind of patina of age that everything seems, seems to have, uh, ranging from sort of early 20th century to like, to me, like mid 70s or something, this kind of oldness. That's right. I use, I mean, until now, I, I never used color in the films, which of course uh, evocates a kind of oldness um, because I always wanted to, yeah, to, to have, um, I mean, to reduce uh, the image of information and to make it timeless. Um, and for me, color is one indication which is a lot saying about time. I mean, even if you, if you use uh, pellicule, if you use real film, you see what kind of time it is or you, f you see kind of, I don't know, fashion or whatever in the color. So I wanted to reduce this in the also, black and white, I think it's more close to our unconsciousness. There's also this theory that you dream in black and white and not in color, um. that you can somehow lose more uh, your re reality, which is around you, to, to get into the film. And, um, and it's right that I'm, I'm very interested in, in many different epochs. I mean, I did also things of, uh, about perspective in Renaissance theater and I mean it's not only it's not, it's not only one epoch I'm I'm very interested in all kind of different uh, history yeah also in art or literature or whatever 
So, and I'm trying, but what I'm trying to do is something timeless. And, but um, the thing is that we don't know how the future looks. So, I mean, it looks old, but perhaps this is the future. But it, the future doesn't necessarily look like faded paper. There's a kind Sorry? of- Sorry? The, 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 the future doesn't look like sunburnt paper, perhaps. Or maybe it does, but it, there's a kind <laughs> of, you know, there's, there's a very styli- there's a kind of very conscious stylistic choice. Yeah, the the paper, this kind of yellowish paper. Uh yeah, and the, the yellowish paper, the kind of autumnal colors, m- m- maybe a subjective, but autumnal colors and kind of dyed fabric. Um, yeah, th- th- curtains th- from flea markets. Yeah, old boxes, uh, anthropological s- kind of almost reenactments of sets. You know, there is there's a very specific concern that seems to be kind of almost like subconscious of the work. Yeah. Um, it's also about um, a kind of um, consciousness that that it's not. It's I mean, it's not new what I'm doing. And I'm, for example, this uh, these old papers where I do the watercolors on. These are patchworks of kind of bits of old papers what I find, and to 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 give them somehow a link to history. Or I mean, like I I use also this used fabric to to to. How to say? I mean, to to link them to somebody else, to something else, uh, which is true. Which, I mean, which is in history, but we don't know where it is. I mean, it's kind of a yeah of, of something what we don't know. Um, a, a sub content, let's say. Um, I fly in four days to Sydney, to the Sydney Biennial, and um, <coughs> I will show Die Straße, and because they couldn't pay a transport of the curtains, they fa- found a lot of sails, so the curtains of this kind of stage will be sails. Um, and, and then I have a, um, a solo show in Hanover, the 7th of April. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.